Singapore. This is a multiracial, multireligious, and multilingual country. For over than half a century, Singapore has been maintaining this unique structure of hers by strengthening the harmony between its citizens. Here, people often associate a Chinese with Buddhism, a Malay with Islam, an Indian with Hinduism, and a Eurasian with Christian, although this is not always the case. Living in such harmony makes cross-cultural interaction a common situation. It happens due to religion conversion or even interracial marriage. This then results into questions like, what if race and religion are combined? What if faith and tradition were to coexist with each other? Together, we will find out in this short documentary titled Muslim Converts in Singapore Between Faith and Tradition. Among the 5 million people living in Singapore, only 15.6% are Muslims in 2020. On the same year, according to the Muslim Converts Association of Singapore, a total of 623 individuals have converted into Islam, making interfaith marriage a normal phenomenon in Singapore. The common stereotype that people have on converts is that they will not be able to practice their cultures and traditions once they have embraced Islam. Other misunderstandings include a rift between the person and his family or converting into Islam means becoming a Malay. So, how true is this perception? Is it true that Islam does not allow Muslims to practice their customs and traditions? And if not, to what extent is practicing tradition can be allowed in a person's life? I ask two rivets to share their stories and experiences on practicing faith along with their cultures and tradition. Meet Mr. Firdaus Chia, a Singaporean Chinese Muslim who was previously a Catholic and he embraced Islam on 2nd of November 2014. Next, let's meet Mrs. Misato Yamada, a Japanese Muslim who's residing in Singapore since 2014 and later on embraced Islam on the year of 2016. There's also a stereotype that uh, it's only for the Malays. So, uh, even for my parents, in their time, they would think that it's a Malay religion. So, I mean, you have Malay friends that say, if you, if you embrace Islam, they say, you must look Malayu. So, you know. so, so, you get it from both sides, the Muslim side and the Chinese side also say the same thing. My friend said, wow, Muslim is very strict, strict religion. Can you adapt it? Can you, can you stop to drink alcohol? Can you stop eat the pork? So, uh, as a Chinese, culturally, we celebrate Chinese New Year. Uh, the misconception, see, misconception not only comes for the Muslim, but also from the Muslim about other religion, I mean other cultures also. Like, uh, they think that maybe, some of them think maybe Chinese New Year is a religious thing, but it's not because it's just about families gathering together, uh, bonding again. Uh, it's like we make it once a year kind of gathering. So when I became a Muslim, um, I find that there's nothing wrong with that and also I ask my ustas and everything. These are all cultural practices that don't go against the Islamic faith. So we still practice it even as a Muslim. Qingming is basically just go to the grave and clean the grave and just pay respects to the ancestors. So um, of course there are some elements of religiosity in, in the Qingming. Okay? Um, but doesn't mean as a Muslim you need to do those things like drastic or burning because they are people who are not Muslim. Uh, last day of the year, so uh, Japanese tradition is uh, eat long noodle. Uh, meaning so long means a uh, long, long like uh, happiness, the prosperity like that. Yeah, God's festival. Oh, God's festival. Yeah, that every year like um, the parents or uh, Please grow up, please healthy, then a very sweet girl, like, that's why it's so like, uh, like, uh, like something, the doll, doll, yeah, then a boy doll and a girl doll, then there's a decolette nicely, yeah, yeah, then uh, like nice uh, pink and a rice cracker, eat the rice cracker, yeah, then I check the ingredient, my, my mom uh, sent uh, the rice cracker from Japan, so then I check the ingredients. Oh, okay, can. Then we eat the celebrate. Strigo san is uh, seven years, five. Uh, uh, girls normally celebrate three years and seven years. 
then wear a nicely kimono, then take photo, then a nice dinner or lunches, then celebrate a relative. Yeah, the, that one also like um, play for uh, grow a uh, very healthy and a good girl and nice girl like that. Mm. So he asked me, um, how do I feel like when I don't get to eat pork again or when I don't get to eat uh, drink alcohol, you know? Then it's okay because I know that he loves me, Allah, and he wants me good for my health and everything, good for my spiritual life. I should avoid those things. So I just put it aside. Yeah. So typically, most Malay get this wrong. They thought bak means pork. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing wrong lah because you think bakwa, bak, what bak is pork, right? You know. Actually, bakwa, bak in Hokkien means meat. Meat. So, meat, caramelized meat is bakwa. But it can be chicken, it can be beef, yambu can be anything lah. Bak means meat. So, when you see bak chang, means meat dumpling. It's not, it's not pork dumpling. Yeah, it means meat dumpling. But it's just because Chinese feel that they like to eat the pork, and also because pork is a cheaper meat, they put the pork inside. So when they say bachang, they naturally assume it's pork already because it's easier to sell the pork meat lah to, to the Chinese, right? So that's why uh, there is a misconception that also from the Muslims or the Malay thinking that it's actually uh, pork, but actually it's not lah. It's actually just meat. So if you want to eat bakute, it's meat. It's actually, it's called meat bone soup. In indirect translation, it's called meat bone soup. So you can change to lamb, you can change to beef, up to you. Well, for me, actually, I'm not strong at alcohol. That's why the alcohol issue, nah, nothing, yeah. But you know, alcohol and the Japanese are really, uh, yeah, strong, like a culture. We call it like after five culture. After five meaning more. After five, let's go drink, then, uh, then uh, talk more honest, like uh, with boss talking with boss. For me, yeah, normally uh, Japanese this is more so. The Japanese disease use melin, but melin is uh, made from alcohol, normally made from alcohol, so that's why I cannot use melin. I want to make this one, but I cannot use melin. The how? Then uh, it's easy, uh, like like uh, put sugar a bit, put sugar and honey a bit, then cannot uh, cook exactly the same, but still okay. Mm. Pork, but... Mm, I still can use chicken, so that's why not so much travel. Huh? Mm. After hearing the thoughts and opinions from our interviewees, it is best for us to support our understanding by asking the expert. Let's go! In order to truly understand this issue, I meet Ustaz Mabushra Habibullah from Muslim Converts Association of Singapore, MCAS, to hear her views from an Islamic perspective. She is the senior executive of Dakwah and handles MCAS monthly talks as well as the Dakwah awareness training program. We have seen the growth, uh, subhanAllah, in the in the past few years. Um, we have seen like between six hundred to seven hundred conversion a year. Uh, therefore, it's about like you know an estimation of like a four conversion per per day. Yes, we have seen um, uh, practicing tradition is something that. Um, is known in Islam as Urf. There is a name for it. It's called the Urf, right? From the beginning of Islam, we have seen that Urf is something that is not rejected totally in the religion. But it is categorized, actually. Uh, there are Urf that does not go against the religion. Um, it's something that is called the norm of the country. It incorporates um, that culture into the religion. If it can meet, it doesn't mean that once you convert to Islam, you leave everything that you have learned and known before. We can see that if the tradition does not go against the Sharia, um, especially that five things that uh, Islam is all about, you know, that uh, protection of nafs, which is protection of your life, protection of your mind, protection of your religion, protection of your art, art is your honor and your lineage, and then protection of mal, protection of wealth. If it doesn't go against these five, then it definitely is something that is accepted and you know, Islam is diverse, we accept um, these things inshallah. As Singapore is a country of multiracial community, it demands us to be respectful and understanding towards one another. 
Thus, for people who come from different religion and for those who have been practicing their customs and traditions, it is not hard to adapt after embracing Islam. As said in the previous interview, Islam is such a wonderful religion which is not rigid and makes it easy for everyone to practice it. Therefore, people shouldn't cast away their tradition for it is origins that make humans unique from one another. But keep in mind, while practicing them, they must align with all the Islamic rulings that have been set by the Quran and Sunnah. Hope this video gives deeper understanding to all viewers. Till then, Assalamualaikum!